lumpy pillow calls. Uh, no, they're not lumpy pillows. That's not what they call on. Okay. That when you say lumpy pillows, now you're in. What's it like when you're when you're sitting there and you know someone's lying to your face? Well, the, with the dep with depositions, and I've been a lot of them going, you know, back a long, long time. But these are these are different when you know that they're ambulance chasing lawyers, and you know, and it's like it's disgusting. But one of the things, one of my things I was upset about the most in the Coomer deposition was the judge. Not necessarily Coomer, the Coomer lawyers. They just they just jabbed me. But they was already very upset with the judge. And what I mean by that is. The judge a year ago, this judge was appointed by Biden, and I was their first case, this Coomer frivolous case. Now I never read it. I was served. I was served papers on the steps of the Colorado Capitol. I didn't know who Coomer was. I didn't know anything about him. Okay. The only time I had ever badmouthed Eric Coomer was when the spring of 2021, when he made a deal with Newsmax. And and all of a sudden I get called by Newsmax saying I can't come on anymore to talk about my pillows and my company. What what happened with your Twitter account and the uh, company page? Well, first mine was taken down because we have all the election fraud with these Dominion machines. We have a hundred percent proof. And then I when they took it down um, uh, about my, three weeks my, ago, I, and then I put it back up. My personal, I put it. It was a Mike, thing uh, thank you very much. Mike, Mike, I, you're talking about machines uh, that, that we at Newsmax have not been able to verify any of uh, yeah, okay. those you kinds of allegations. What? We uh, just want to let people know probably, that there's uh, nothing uh, substantive uh, that we've uh, seen. And let me read you something uh, there. Uh, While there uh, were uh, some clear uh, evidence uh, of uh, some uh, cases uh, of vote uh, fraud uh, and uh, election uh, irregularities, uh, the election results in every state were certified and Newsmax accepts the results as legal and final, the courts have also supported that view. So right. we so, wanted so to talk to you about place. canceling you suppress, culture, you if you will. Suppressed. We don't want you to relitigate the, the, like the, the wait, wait, uh, allegations wait, 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 that you're wait. making, I'm, Mike, because I'm, I'm we, finding, we understand where you are. So let me ask you this. Do you Twitter think that this should be so temporary so because it appears to be permanent? Could you make an argument that it is temporary? What? <laughs> could you make an argument that this could be a temporary banning rather than permanent? No, I want it to be a permanent because you know what? They did this because I'm revealing all the evidence on Friday of all the election fraud with these machines. So I'm sorry if you okay. think it's not uh, real. Mike, I, 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 can I ask our producers, can we uh, get out of here, please? Uh, I, I don't want to have to keep going over this. Actually, we at Newsmax Mike, have not been able wait, to verify status, any of those wait allegations. Wait, that you're, you're, Mike, oh, hold on a second. Everybody hold on a second. Mike, Mike, hold on one second. Uh, let's talk a little bit about just what is happening. So in, in effect, the four months prior with promo code Newsmax, we took in $3 million. Afterwards, we took in 300000 And I knew that was going to happen, but we were just going to tank my pillow. So I went on and said, I don't know who this Coomer is, but I said, you're, you're attacking my pillow. That's a traitor. You're a traitor of this country. Mm. We're making U.S. products, right? So that's all I ever said about him. Now, a year later, he serves me papers on the steps of the Colorado Capitol. That's the spring, this spring of 22, okay? The spring of 22. When he did that, I just thought it was another lawsuit from the machine companies, Dominion or Smartmatic or whoever, right? I never read it. I never read it. Put it, in the, put it on the pile, right? So I put this on the pile. Now here, the night before, now you go another year later, and I'm finally in the first deposition for this Cooper case. And I read it the night before for the first time. Now granted, I probably should have read it sooner, but I thought it was something, you know, same thing, put it on the pile, you go through these depositions, a lot of wasted time, I, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. You know, they ask you for everything, I ask them for stuff and you don't get it, but I I have to provide, I mean, everything you could ever imagine. How many hours that day? That of deposition or the or that yeah. discovery for the deposition. The depositions, eight hours, nine hours uh, every day. I did one, but I want to say this is when I read this the night before, I was so upset because this was this case was different. This was the most frivolous case in history. It would be like if I sued my neighbor. And he wasn't even involved with anything. I never did anything with this Coomer, other than what I told you, what he hurt my pillow. So now I'm going to my lawyers. I come in and I'm so mad. I said, 
why wasn't this case dismissed last summer? Uh, and they said, they get this, the judge, this Judge Wang, did not, she she said, I'm not going to rule on a dismissal. Go ahead and do discovery and go ahead and do depositions. And I'll, someday I'll give you my, my thing. Now, if that happens in our country, if you do that, you ruin everything, all frivolous cases. And if I was a little, if there was a little guy, didn't have any money, yeah. you're breaking him because you're, you. I don't care. Just give me a ruling. Is it a frivolous case or not? Is it dismiss it or not? And she didn't do that. Well, let me, let me stop. So you. I was so mad at her. Because, because I've heard you say this many times where it seems one of the things that hurts or, or annoys or angers you more than anything is that they went after your company. They went after my company. And it's surreal now because I'm I'm in your headquarters. Yeah. I've met all these lovely employees. Yeah. So if you if you could share, like, is that what keeps you up at night? Where you're sitting there going, you know, these people don't know that you walk these halls, you look these people in the eyes. Right. Uh, right. So so what kind of stuff do you carry with you? Like maybe maybe you haven't shared with well, yeah, here, you, you know, here's the, you got to understand the context of these lawsuits. They're they're suing me, but they sued my pillow. All of them did, including the including this Coomer one. They sued my pillow. Now, I'm, now my pillow is an employee owned company. I just have the most shares. There's you know, a lot of employees have stock. A lot. I don't know how many exactly, but a lot. It's in the could be upwards of a hundred have stock. And so we're employee owned company. Now you attack. My pillow, because of your, because I'm out there trying to secure our elections and out there speaking out my First Amendment right of free speech, and you come and sue my pillow. Now they, they use they sued my pillow under the premise that I'm doing this to make my representing my pillow to make money for my pillow. So the reality is, as my world is crumbling, as it, in, the, in January of of ninth of. 2021, when I got the evidence, my first the evidence said, explained everything. It was done with computers, and I sounded the alarm. As I'm getting canceled every day, retailers, shopping channel, just getting destroyed. Well, now a normal person would say, "Hey, I got to protect my employees and my company." But that, and I, and I do, and I have, and they all know that for 20 years. I've people went with me 20 years. These are careers at my pillow, not not just jobs. Every one of them I treat like they, you know, if they're my only employee, I treat every employee like my only employee, like family. We're like a big family, and this isn't all. This is Democrats, liberals, conservatives, blacks, white, Hispanic, uh, Asian. It doesn't matter here, and so. But they know I've always had their back. So when they watch me out there, uh, you know, raising my hand in January of 2021, where, as you know, back then, most of the country was silent because they were afraid of, afraid and fear or, or canceled. And the only reason they went after me, it was, it was because of pictures at the White House. And they go, hey, we can really destroy him now and destroy his company. So when they went to do that, I had a choice to make then. Do I just say, I say, back off and say, you know what, please don't cancel us. I'll quit talking to him, you know. Yeah. And but I can't because I lose my company forever. My employees know that I have their best interests at heart, whether they can't see it in front of them. So I was going to ask you, right. so it's clear you've got their back. Yeah. But, but do the employee owners of my pillow have your back? You, yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. And here's where they have my back. Did I talk to them? They, a lot of them don't even know what I'm, what I'm, why I'm out there doing what I'm doing. But they just know I've always had their back. So they will sit there and you could talk to every single employee Include my own family members, whatever that work here, and say that have said, uh, you know, um, you know, we're getting destroyed. You know, they didn't say stop, but back then they're going. They know I'm not going, and I go, you don't get it. We don't have a company. If we if we don't secure elections and save this country, we don't have a company anyway. And they trust that that they trust that that in the end, you know, we've always made it through by prayer. We here God's the chairman of our board. You know, Amen. Jesus is the chairman of our board. So when we make decisions. You know, they're prayed about and they're made decisions. And it's not like, do I listen to my other employees and stuff? Absolutely. But it's about my pillow. I didn't ask him any opinion out here. I know, you know. you're prayer filled because I want the first time I met you I was at the symposium. And I remember, uh, I remember the story. Maybe you don't remember it, but uh, you said, well, I got to get you back to New Mexico. I said, well, I, I got to go to Bedminster. I got to go to New Jersey. And you, and you right away, you're like, why you got to go to New Jersey? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was my only opportunity to, to right. have met uh, the president who you know very well. Yeah. But I remember you telling uh, Kendra, yeah. saying, you want to go to the White House? And she said, Mike, I haven't prayed about it. 
Right. Yeah. That's a stunning yeah. thing to say. Yeah. When she yeah. said, I'm like, you want to go to bed, mate? Yeah. No, no, she really pray, pray, I mean, yeah. pray about everything. 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 Even the, even the events I go to, you'll see me miss some rallies or go to some rallies or events, whatever. Everyone I pray about because for the world I'm in now, where I'm in now, if I don't pray about everything, you know, I'm focused on one thing, and that's everything comes from our elections. Yeah. And people come to me all the time, Mike, you know, will you help us down here at the borders or help us get? No, I'm hyper-focused on this. It's consumed me 18 hours a day since uh, since November 4th of 2020. And But at the same time, you have this destruction going on, attacks over here on my pillow and my employees. That's why you see in that deposition, he made it very personal, and he did it on purpose. Or they call about um, maybe they didn't get their pillow on time because of uh, um, the FedEx or whatever. But we'll cover them even though it could be somebody else's fault. Nobody called because of a lumpy pillow. But good, good one, though. You done? Yeah, I'm done. What I'm saying Obviously, is... you don't have a my pillow too. You don't, do you? What I'm saying is, Mr. Lindell... Asshole. I... But go ahead. No, I'm pissed. I understand. You're calling my pillow a lumpy pillow. You sued my pillow. You don't even know my employees. You know my employees, and and they, what's really what's really amazing is they've deposed so many of my employees that they've had to go down for these depositions and sit there. And you know we don't we don't object to it ever. But I'm thinking, is this a waste of time or not? No, because they get down there and they're going. Um, what do you mean, Mike? Never talked to you about this. What do you mean, Mike? Doesn't Did you, you see the mashup where they mixed Biden? And Kamala into your my pillow advertisement. Yeah. Did you see that? No. no. It's like the funniest thing. Yeah, yeah. You're an asshole. Asshole. That's what you are. That when you say lumpy pillows, now you're an asshole. Is it mypillow.com? The lumpy pillows kiss my ass. And, and Aaron and I probably laugh harder than anything. Mm -hmm. right. so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, those things are funny. The one thing you're not going to see me, everybody, and I've said this just in a speech the other night uh, that I just did, was you're not going to see me out there going, you know, um, focusing on Biden, his brain, and his falling up the steps. And mm -hmm. those are people that watch Fox News. Everybody, this is all a big distraction. It's not them. This is the evil globalist uniparty um, deep state CCP that's come in. The Democrats wanted these machines gone for two decades. Our biggest fight has been against people that have ours in front of their name in these states where we've went into. Red states, you think that, hey, let's secure our elections. You go into your Missouris, your Alabamas, your Arkansas. It's how, how are they, you know, my, that's my biggest fight. You're going, okay, you're not really, you know, there's a deviation there in behavior. Why are you stopping this? When we, you know, you'd want to look into it. Yeah. And so that's been one of, kind of one of my biggest surprises, but it's been the un opening up of the onion, so to speak. And that's why you have a bucket here of common sense. But I explained it on my stage uh, last night. Um, I said, there's two buckets right now. If you didn't have, you, we've had two great things happen. One is with, with uh, the miracle of the 16 election, we were able to be shown by December of 2019, we were able to be shown what what politics could do, decisions that were made in politics, what it would manifest to to help all people, not just one party. If you were in December of 2019, the physical footprint of our country, the highest consumer confidence, whether you were in the street with no forks or a four forker, um, your your level got lifted, yeah. physically got lifted, uh, your your physical possession. But your as far as your God was anybody reaching out for God then? No, because you reach out to God when things are going bad. Those are your new those are new people finally praying or finally reaching out. So you have the so you have a great example that we haven't had before in that in that magnitude. And the and, and they did it with even with fighting everything else, right? So yeah. that was a miracle. Now you have just a long comes the China virus and all the attacks, everything, and the ele and the 2020 election, which will go down as the the most important election in history. I don't care. It doesn't even matter what happens in 2020. 2020 is where it's at. If we, if 2020 didn't happen, the way it went down, where all these algorithms, where everything got, all these deviations came out, we wouldn't be talking. Amen. Okay. We would not be talking. And I've told people, as you know, at the when I did the event uh, this summer, um, 
the, the, the summit, the election summit. We did that, and I said, my opened up the speech was how we got here. These were all miracles that people would think as bad. Yeah. You know, two senators, I'm praying, please steal them both. Please steal them both, right? So I'm praying for this. Now, you think of this. If these guys, this administration, if you want to call it that, if they didn't go out right away, hit the ground running to destroy our country, this has done us more help than you can imagine for two reasons. One is everybody out here, the people, seeing what good decisions make in politics, what it can manifest for physical things here, right? Yeah. For your physical lives, your, your joy, whatever, your, 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 your physical, you know, your well-being, right? Your, your uh, worldly possessions is the word I'm looking for. So they are going up. No matter where you started, it was lifted. But now everybody's getting destroyed in very short period of time, two and a half years. Right Actually, you can add the China virus in about three and a half right. years. Okay, you add that in because that was all intentional. So you got three and a half years. So this is all set up, but it's backfiring on them for a couple of reasons. One is people now, now we're talking about the uniting of our country politically wise. Okay, so here's the political bucket. You have people pouring into this bucket of common sense. I don't care if you call it the Donald Trump bucket or not. Yeah. You know, it's the people's bucket. I talk to people that are Democrats out in California. They're pouring into this bucket. They don't know what a Republican is. I know what one can be really bad. I know what a bad Democrat can be. But there's there, the people, us as a people, not the politician, the people are pouring into this bucket. We don't even really know what that is. You got, let's put an R in front of it and call it the, the, the new Republican. The common sense bucket, okay, but whatever that is, that's this bucket people pour in. But there's another bucket that's even more important, and that's this bucket, the biggest revival for Jesus Christ in history. That bucket there, more, now more than ever, as things continue to get destroyed and people out there feeling hopeless because they, they they're watching too much Fox News. You're not going to see any hope for our elections and stuff on Fox News. Yeah. You're not they, they took conservative media out of the picture. Newsmax, Fox News, all these Salem media, they took them out of the picture. By doing that, them not saying nothing, that's what got us to where we're at. Not just these attacks. We've always had these attacks. This bucket here, people are praying and praying and pouring into this bucket, which is amazing. Well, I I, I wanted to switch gears real quick, because you had occasion to interview the real president, mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. For how do you do, how do you sleep the night before? I mean, I mean, like, I mean, maybe you know him so well now that it doesn't yeah. matter. But, but uh, there's got to be times where you pinch yourself, going, "How in the world?" Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to when I met him. Um, you know, I had a dream that I would meet him. This is in my book too. I had read a, it. Yeah, you know, I had that it's dream. A good book. And, they, and <laughs> all my all my life, it was like, and that you know, all these I, on my table for my book, there was a table this size, and I had all the stories of my life laid out in two thousand spring of two thousand fifteen. That would be they were they were be um, just chapters of my life, like little. It could be a month or whatever. These piles, and I said to this pastor that was there, and he, it was helped me. I said, I don't know what to leave in or what to leave out, and he goes, Mike, he goes, pick any pile. And I picked a pile. I picked one. It was December two thousand, or I mean. Uh, 1986 or whatever, December. So I read this chapter, this little story of it within that month. And I read it, and he said, and I sat there, and he goes, the normal person, what he called the normal, any person at that right there, that little mini miracle that happened, or, with, or that happened there, they would have got on their knees and surrendered to Jesus immediately and gave their life to him. But he said, maybe all this stuff, now remember, I wasn't saved yet then. I didn't get saved till February 18, 2017. So that's a huge date, okay? So he said, maybe all this has happened so you can finally, you can't go out there and talk about Jesus until you're yourself. And, you know, you're, you know this is all to show you these many miracles. When are you finally, because I always always say to God, show me more, show me more, show me more. Well, then you get to the, when the present thing, when I had that dream in May of 15, just a month after that, and I had this dream, I would meet Donald Trump, I go, what? What am I? And it was very vivid picture in this office, a very vivid picture behind us, him and I alone. And I've had dreams like that before, and they become very, they're very prophetic at once like that. So I was almost like I knew, but I'm going, why? Well, then, he, of course, in June, he comes down the escalator, he's running for president. And I knew nothing about politics. I didn't know a liberal from a conservative. I had no idea. So, so I, something real quick. I had never voted. Because I remember in the book, 
wasn't there something about where you saw him that you knew the picture had to be taken someplace else in the room because of, I don't know if I if there were was, pictures behind and you and your behind. vision, you like, it yeah. was a different place. Yeah. And, and and when he got up, didn't he like walk you over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I was sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you're exactly right. You remember this. But but let's take it back to when he came down that escalator, then he escalator and he's running and um, he, he's running for office. At that point, I'm going, wow, you know, this has to mean something because I just had that, you know, dream. And I'm going, and now I'm saying to me, I had to find out what I had never voted. I was an ex crack addict, ex addict. I didn't think politics matter. I I could care less back then. I had better things to do, you know, with my time, whatever. I'm just living, living this addiction, functioning addict world I was in. Well, anyway, you roll into 15, and now you get into um, um, the early 16, and I ended up at the National Prayer Breakfast. And this is, remember, this is also when uh, Ben Carson was running. Yeah. Now, I had never met Ben before, and he, and all of a sudden I picked out of 12 people to pray with him in a room. I mean, these are things that divine, all these things that don't happen kept happening to me. And then it gets up to July of 2000. 16, and I was on a, a plane, I'll never forget it, flying to California to do my movie Church People, and uh, and I'm flying, and I'm getting, and now this is July of 16, he's already the candidate, whatever, and he's at, and, and I'm up there, and I grabbed this magazine about Donald Trump, and, um, or this, uh, yeah, and I had my phone set for 10,000 feet, you know, back then, the, and uh, when I got internet, I could get internet, buy it on the plane or whatever, and but my phone was set to ding when I got an email. I just got a new phone. I had, you know, this thing to ding for an email. And uh, and I'm up there, and I just started, I started, I shut the book, and, I'm, and I'm, I remember this foreigner was sitting next to me. I was in the bulkhead there. And I said, I said, God, it said, if I was supposed to see, even though I wasn't saved, born again, I still did a lot of praying to God. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you that. And, I, and I'm praying, and I'm going, God, please. Now, tell me what I have to do with Donald Trump. I mean, you know, I know I've seen this picture or whatever. I need an answer. It was one of those things. I need an answer. At that moment in time, my phone ding. Mike, this is Donald Trump. Will you meet me at Trump Hotel in New York City or whatever? And I'm going, God? And, and, and I'm, I literally started bawling. And the guy goes, are you okay? The flight attendants go, yes, it's a miracle. But it wasn't that I was going to meet Donald Trump. It was I was answered in real time, real time. by God. Wow. I mean, it was the most amazing thing. So then when you ask, how does it feel, that led up to a series of events you'd have to, it would take too long to explain. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. We, we, get, that. we get up to 3 o'clock in the morning, the night before I'm going to meet him, and I'm overlooking Central Park. And I'm sitting there. It wasn't. It wasn't a nervousness of so much of meeting him at that time. Remember, he was. He was. At, this was August fifteenth of two thousand sixteen. By the way, it was the lowest he was in the polls ever. Okay, at that it was. Uh, and it's uh, on August fifteenth. Now this is three in the morning on August fifteenth, and I'm overlooking Central Park, and I'm sitting there going, God, "Why am I picked for this?" I just knew that I felt if I overslept or there, it was going to change some history thing or whatever. You know, I got and I was very. Uh, I, I guess the words weren't was I was I nervous? I was more of a thing with God. They're going like, "What is this?" You know, this is these miracles were lining up. Can I ask you and, this? In your discussions with the president since then, has he ever expressed to you a similar thing where he kind of had a feeling that he was going to meet you ahead of time? And the reason why I ask this is that, you know, God's so providential right. about who he lines up. Mm -hmm. And your your meeting is so, it's just like, how in the world that happened? Has he ever shared like his side well, of the story? Well, well, no, and I've never. And here's and uh, to finish that part. When I went in there and met him, it, they said you're never going to meet him alone. Uh, there's going to be other people in the room, and whatever you do, don't tell him you were an addict, you know, or a crack addict, yeah. whatever. So the first thing I a series of and I am alone. Yeah. And uh, one of the first things I said, I said, he goes, are you a Christian, Mike? Or are you a cross? I go, yes, Mr. Trump, and this is a divine appointment. And then I go, I started, I go, you know, and I was a crack addict, and I kind of look at him, <laughs> and I just did opposite of what Should the people laugh, said. What was his um, response? No, he just, he, 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 I think, he, and I said, I'm going to have a recovery network someday and whatever, oh. and he goes, I'm going to shut down the borders. It was like, oh, that wow. thing, shut down the borders and stop the drugs pouring in. So it was like, he, I, I 
I was kind of blown away that he's asking me this stuff. There was no agenda other than my pillows were made here. And he was asking me about his amendment. How is it working out for you? But I couldn't believe he wanted my opinion on stuff. Wow. People don't realize what there's two things about him that people need to know. One is he's a great listener, you know, and they, and, you know, and the other thing is his sense of humor is off the charts. Yeah. And, um, but one of the things is, do, so do I, did I get nervous? That, and you've got to realize from that point on, we, I didn't have his phone number. What everybody perceived in this country, because I went all in then, was that, and I would be at rallies, and he'd maybe call me out, and he did it from um, summer of 17 or whatever, and, and, and these things. But one of the things that happened then, when I was saved on February 18, 2017, after that, he invites me to the White House for a manufacturer summit. And this is pretty epic, everybody. I walked in there. Now, I really, I never thought I could even step within 10 feet of the White House because of my past, right? And here I am walking into the White House to do this, uh, this summit, not knowing what to expect. And I get in there, and there's this table, and there's all these, there's maybe 20 people, and their names are there, and there's no name by this. And he said, and he said that's where the president's sitting. And I go, and... Uh, they actually said he, the guy said that he wanted to sit by you. I'm going, what? You know, so he's sitting here. Now we go live on national TV and all you see is us two there. And this goes out, you know, across the country. And my friends, these are my ex crack addict friends, right? Yeah. They're sitting there and they're going, what is this ex crack addict sitting there? This crack addict sitting there with the president. Jesus is real because this is impossible. Yeah. That was totally impossible against yeah. everything, right? So things like this that happened to me up to that point, it was like, show me more. To me, it was a miracle that I'm even put in this position. Let me let me share this with you because because yeah. by the time we met, from from a standpoint of just who people knew, I'm like, meeting you was a big deal for me. So mm -hmm. I go to I go to the symposium, and I similarly when we get up to that stage, right. my seat was right next to yours. I mean, you didn't know this. I'm sharing this with you right now. I'm sitting right. down there, like, my goodness, I'm sitting right next to Mike Lindell. Yeah, see, I, stage. <laughs> I know you don't either, but like it's, yeah. it's like it's bizarre. And yeah. then I remember when we went to Bedminster, we got to eat dinner. Yeah, and I want to share this with you because I, I think I think this is uh, is is it jives with what you're telling me, right? Um, you would think that, you know, the president or someone that's so important would be really uppity, but you're you're yourself even there. Yeah. And that's one yeah. thing. I was like, Mike's Mike doesn't Mike's Mike, no matter where yeah. he's at. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember even asking you because you drink more coffee than anyone. You drink more coffee than me, and that's like almost a right. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. You said, Mike, you're on your. I counted your cups. Huh. You're on your fourth cup. Uh, and I stopped you, and you, of course, you're on your phone. I said, how many cups of coffee are you going to drink? And you almost like, you're like, what? And then you ignored me, and then you went back, and you ended up drinking a fifth cup of coffee. <laughs> but the point is, is that when you, I'm back. <laughs> when, you, when, when you would talk, most people would kind of check the etiquette. I looked over at the president, and he's looking over, and I could see, like, genuine affection. I was like, uh, I, think, I think he likes how authentic you, right, you yeah. are. I think and he did. How we became um, really close friends and all is, is it manifested into that. And um, after in the spring of 21 and stuff, it's when I finally got his phone number. Uh -huh. you know? and, and, we, and we'll and we'll talk. It's almost like an encouragement thing where, you know, when we'll talk at least, I'd say, sometimes once a week, a couple every other week maybe, um, I'll do a speech and he'll say he'll compliment on it. Like after we'll be able yeah. to have him compliment me. But but we'll, um, um, he really, I think one of the things he respects uh, is, is the marketing I do. You know, the marketing, he sees it out there. And he knows where I've come from. And it's like, I think, you know, he respects that part. But he also, he I think he likes that. And he's the same way around me. He's, he's about as real as it gets. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, sugarcoat stuff. We, we'll talk the same as we are right now. And uh, sometimes it's waiting for the other one to finish before the other one, you know, it's like we're cutting in and, and we can go off in different directions. But it's but one of the things people, like I said, the sense of humor, people need to know that the other day um, he said, but this is a couple, of, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. He goes, Mike, he goes, can you and, and this is on one of the indictments. And we were talking and I said, sir, I said, you're you're 
Polls keep going up. We're at a time in history the public is is aware of everything. It's like when they when they attack me and they you know, or they're indicting you. I said the public now knows that this all any other time in history one would be you'd be done as a politician. Mm-hmm. But people are onto this. It's like that the little boy that called wolf. You lie, you lie, you lie to us. We're not you know now when you do something here, evil's good, good is evil. It's the opposite of what you think, right? Yeah. So anyway, he said to me, he goes. Mike, here's his humor. He goes, you know, he goes, you're like that. He really respects I never stop talking, right? And I didn't know who, <laughs> and he goes, and he never stopped. I'm never giving up. I'm never stopping. And he goes, Mike, you're the Patrick Henry of our lifetime. You know, give me liberty, give me death. And this guy never stopped, right? He goes, he goes, they're going to build a statue of you so big. And he goes, of course, they'll tear it down right away. <laughs> he threw that in there. He thinks about it. But, but uh, you know, it's like, the, it's like uh, he'll ask me, you know, basically, what's the sense of the public? We'll talk about that stuff. And, and, um, and he, uh, he genuinely, the, his agenda, he loves the country. And he's not, I said to him the other day, I said, so how are you doing? How are you doing? This was after the fourth indictment. Yeah, I call him up or I think he called me, I, whatever it was. And I said, I think he called me to compliment the event. And I said, so in the midst of all that, he calls up to compliment the event. He's getting, just got blasted two days prior yeah. with that indictment or maybe even the day before. And he called me up to compliment me. He goes, I heard it. You know, I'd seen part of it. It was great, you know. And uh, and I said, well, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, he goes, well, I really don't have a choice. And I said, I know that, but how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and he uh, he goes, I'm never giving up. He said, we're not giving up and ever. And he goes, uh, we got, we're going to lose our country. And he goes, and he knows he could just, just like myself, I could have pulled away and just let my pillow and not worried about all these things. And, uh, and, and. Uh, you know, to uh, he's not giving up. It wouldn't matter, you know, um, it, nothing would matter because he where, knows it's gone. Where, I mean, where do you think that comes from? Because I, cause I, I mean, he, I know he's got to be more guarded than than your average person. But you, you wear your faith on your sleeve. I mean, you, you and I've seen a few things where um, Trump is is. Yeah, especially during Christmas time, he'll talk about Jesus. Yeah. Have you ever had a discussion about? Faith? Yeah, yeah. What I tell him is, I it's like you know, like I do with all, uh, you know, any one of my friends and stuff. You know, I, I don't. Um, it's a little different. I always tell him God's got His hand in all this, sir. Yeah. And I will tell him where a negative is. God's going to use it for a positive. Yeah. And I said, you know, all this stuff right now, because if you looked up, if, I always tell people, if you Google the word patience, you're not going to see a, a picture of me <laughs> or probably a picture of Donald Trump, right? Yeah. But we've we've in this battle, you know, he's very good at seeing the overall picture, and I think that's a sense that I've get bring to him is said, hey, this is not on our timing, it's on God's timing, yeah. and we're going to get to this great place, and I try and tell him like I tell everybody, the negatives happening are actually positives, because more people, I told him just the other day, I said, they're coming to this bucket, pouring in from, you're a uniter, not a divider, you are one of the biggest uniters ever, because you're standing here for what we, you know, Standing up for truth and what's right, mm-hmm. what's the common sense? Like just common sense yeah. is basically it's all you could call call it anything else. One of the things is common sense when you talk about if when, and I tell people when a party I don't care who they are Republican Democrat it don't matter yeah. when they're, when a, when they're making a political decision that doesn't help the people whether you're a Democrat or Republican liberal or conservative if it doesn't help them then you got to ask yourself there's a hidden agenda and what is it. And you better look at that. The problem is we don't have the we don't we we don't have the you know in the old days you might have Fox or Newsmax looking at that going well this doesn't make sense this is a little bit of a deviation here that Brad Raffsenberger doesn't even want to want to uh, look into this or Robin Voss of Wisconsin um, does an investigation and then shuts it down and uh, you're going now why we found all this. Uh, you know, we found all this fraud. The recommendation was to decertify Wisconsin, and you say you're going to look into it, but it, when I can't look into it unless the judge ruled, then the Supreme Court rules that you know, it says, hey, there's fraud, and then you go into hiding until you win again. You know, these are the guys, you know, that particular guy right there sends me a text on the 2022 election in the middle of the night and says, Mike, I beat you twice. I said, you stole it twice, you traitor. He goes, yeah, but I'm going to sleep real good tonight and not on your pillow. Yeah, well, let me <laughs> Let me ask this this question: When when you struggled with addiction, um, I remember in your book there was a pivotal moment 
where uh, you you drove to the fair, the Minnesota State Fair, and I don't know if you hit a telephone. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know that was even in there. Yes, I did. And what year was that, if you recall? 2008. I was there at that fair. You were? Yeah. Oh, wow. I actually went to law school for one year Wow. In at Billy Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I read the book, I'm sitting there going, I think I might have. Really? I might have been right around the corner, and then I see I see you. I mean, I, I see all that you've done with your company. I see all the how you've helped addicts, what you've done for the country, and I'm like, I remember 2008 was that long ago. Right. But there's a good chance we're in the same parking lot right. at the fair, right. and it was just one of those things. There's so many parallels and things, and and I haven't. People don't know my story as much right. as you. I didn't struggle with the crack, but I I actually had a heart attack at 21. Wow. Because of drug drug abuse, it was, right. I tell people I did all the drugs you didn't do. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know I've got a different personality, right. but there's so many things that that when I read the book, I'm like, I couldn't be more different than you and per, on our personality, but like the drive, the attention, the focus, right. and just uh, knowing that those battles physically, mm -hmm. like I, I don't want to glor glorify uh, drug use. People that have abused their bodies know their threshold in a different way. So when you're you get off the stuff, you kind of know your limits in ways that most people wouldn't know. Well, I think what you're saying there too, what people don't realize, addiction is hard work. Mm -hmm. the, the the time put in, I mean, the, the addiction is hard work. Like the the recovery network I have that's online, the Lindo Recovery Network .org, That there is people don't you know. People don't relate to a counselor that's been there that's never been there. When you go to a secular treatment center, they're going, "Oh, you, you, um, you let down your kids. You spent all your money. Yeah. You, um, um, and blah blah blah." We know that we're addicts. Yeah. You know, we. I want to yeah. hear from an addict who's been there and this made it through, and you know, this made it through. But the 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 work that's involved. One of the things that addicts will tell you is, I think all the stuff back then, where you know. Um, probably gave me the base for because I was getting through the, my faith. Even though I wasn't completely saved, I would have these reactionary prayers, and I tell people this all the time too. I would sit there. Now, was I was I um, saved? Uh, did I give my life to Jesus? No. But I would every time I'd be in jail or whatever would happen. Please get me out of this. I'll never do this again. But I call those reactionary prayers. Okay. And it might not be God's will, yeah. okay? And I tell people this I, in my speech last night. All the stuff you're saying, people come up to me all the time. Mike, I prayed, and we're still losing our country, and Donald Trump's not back, and this and that. And I go, well, it might not be God's will. And I say, well, where's God's will? God's will is in the Word. If you stay in the Word, it winds up with being proactive in prayer, and you get a peace about you. But, but you, you, you mentioned earlier that you, you had this direct answer to prayer about Trump, and you, and you wept. In, in February 2021, now my life was upside down too. Right. I, I was employed and all these things. And on January 6th, for me, was mm -hmm. was I had a supernatural encounter. Right. And I've started having uh, visions or daydreams, but they're really vivid. And I, right. I don't come from a background of any of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just tell you that uh, I grew up in a really, really rough circumstances. And I had this uh, daydream where I was back busting tables at Godfather's Pizza where I was when I was 13 years right. old. And we had, you know, I lived down the street from a porno store, a gay bar. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at all the happy families. I'm wiping down the tables. And I remember saying, God, am I cursed? I wasn't a believer. And uh, in February, it's like someone transported me back to the table. And I'm looking around and it was as if God just reminded me. He's like, you're not cursed. And I started crying. Mm -hmm. But around that same time, I had two vivid, I call them, I'll call them vivid daydreams. I don't want to right, say yeah. vision. Oh, yeah. But I, I, my, when my chest would swell up, I'd always feel like, okay, if the Holy Spirit, if my chest fills up and I see something, I can almost take it to the bank. Right. And Erin comes in to the garage, that's where I work. And she said, um, why are you crying? And I go, I'm not cursed. And I was like, and I think I'm going to meet Mike Lindell. Right. No. I think I'm going to meet, and I think I'm going to meet um, the president. Mm -hmm. Now, she does it, like this is all bizarre, right? But I just wanted to tell you from because well, you've noticed different. Respect. Not only did I meet you at the symposium for the first time, you're the one that took me to, to see the president, to see the president. The president. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with wow. you that that um, there's some things when I read the book, I'm like it was like the and and you see you know the um, 
one of the things, you know, you're bringing up there were people, um, I always bring up January 7th and 8th, um, cause I don't see it from outside looking in, you know, as far as the, or people, um, you know, saying, well, I'm going to meet Mike Lindell. You know what I mean? I'm still, I'm still getting used to that to this day. I was one, as you read my book, I couldn't speak in front of people. Can you I go mean, anywhere today? That was a, what? There's no way you can go anywhere today, though. That, no, nowhere. And, nowhere. And, and that is, I have people come up to me and want pictures, and they'll go, can I, do you mind if we appear? I say, well, yeah, in the old days, the only one who wanted my picture were the cops. And, you know, but it's, uh, that's one, you know, one of the things, and it's like, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where I am, in the, even in the world. I mean, they, uh, because it got out there so much. And I look back and I say, you know, and I don't want to, you know, this was God. For God, I think prepared, because years ago I thought, well, my pillow is just a platform for something much bigger. It is. And, you know, and much bigger. And I think what they had with the, with the, the position God put me in on, in January of 21, where everybody else was either in fear or they didn't have the platform or the voice, right? Mm-hmm. That you, you, it didn't matter if you were not in fear, if you didn't weren't able to get it out there. Well, we got to line this up for me to be able to, even through getting attacked, to be able to get the word out saying, I don't care, keep shooting me. We have to save the country. We have to do this. But for the platform being set up was set up in a number of ways. If you look at it from God's point of view, you had to make it where my past, if I'm telling you I was a crack addict, which I did publicly right out of the gate, you, you're going, well, why would he lie about these other things? You know, I didn't care if I got on the cover of a National Enquirer back then. One time they put a thing of well, a mugshot. I was in jail. This is actually for something I didn't do. And I was innocent. And you know how I got out of jail? Because I was in another jail. That was my alibi, you know, for this crime I supposedly committed, right? I mean, that's a pretty good alibi. But I was just full disclosure. Yeah. It does, you know, full disclosure. I can't help my past. I can only use it for such a time as this. And I think... They, they actually, the, a friend of mine in the Secret Service came here once uh, to Minnesota, and he said, you know, you're this is a, you're a big target. This was even before all the election stuff. Mm. And he said, this is when I had the vac- or stuff for the vaccine, I mean, I mean a, a supplement. Yeah. And he came up here because I was getting death threats, everything from when I had this uh, oleander. Mm-hmm. And he came up here and he looked at my safety, don't take this road. Here's what they'll do. Because he told me, I go, what do you mean? He goes, he goes Mike. You're in a very unique position. You have one of the biggest voices in the country, you know, famous. But this is before the 2020 election. Yeah. And he said, they can't get you going backwards because you've already told everything about your life. Mm-hmm. So they can't put mud out there, right? Yeah. The media can't destroy that. And they really can't destroy you this way, he said, because because people are going to say, oh, that's they're, they're just saying that about him because he backs Donald Trump. So they're using that. He said, what they're going to do, they're going to come after your company. Yeah. He said, they're going to come after and destroy your your money. Mm-hmm. Because if you lose your money, you lose your voice. Yeah. And, and, if you, and one of the things in... In 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 the, one of the little miracles, actually, in um, January and February of, and even into the spring, and even as we sit here, you've got to realize I lost. We lost our voice with your Newsmaxes, your Fox with Lawfare, your Foxes, your Newsmax. But the big one for me was Salem Media. Mm-hmm. Now Salem Media is the biggest Christian network in the country. Okay, they I broke bread with the owner. They went public though in seventeen. When they did this, now they're thinking, well, we got to answer to the shareholders. Well, I would go on. They had rev shares. All these hosts across the country. I don't need to name them all, but I got upset one day and I pull, I was going to pull my pillows because they went. They would not let me come on and say why I'm getting canceled. They'd be on there going, "Let's help Mike Lindell out. He just lost two more retailers. Let's help him out and buy, buy, buy." Well, they're making money on that. But if you but you won't let me come on and say why I'm getting canceled. Yeah. We all remember the thing where the Newsmax where he tore off his microphone when they canceled my pillows Twitter, but I couldn't come on and say why they canceled my pillows Twitter. So I say to everyone that, that back then I said, what do you think? This was that with some of the higher ups at both Newsmax and and Salem. I said, do you think I care? If I you think I'd rather lose my money over here, which they're attacking, or my voice? I'd rather lose all my money if I keep my voice. And you guys took my voice from me because you're afraid of lawfare. You're afraid of, you know, say, of, of, any, of speaking out because you're, it's, man, you're money driven. So, you well, know, we, that's, that's horrible. The, the, the reason why 
again, I, you, we don't talk as often as, you know, you talk with Joe or other people, but uh, I've got a comfort level. And I've talked to Joe about this. And the reason why I'm comfortable with, with you is I don't follow a lot of people. I just I don't, I don't have the temperament for it. But, right. but I know your allegiance isn't to money. Like mm-hmm. you've been successful, yeah, yeah, I, but, but, yeah, but it's, right. it's not what drives you. And I'm like, I, I can get behind that. Same thing with Joe. Mm-hmm. Joe Joe's super successful, right. but he he. it's almost like he gets as upset as I do, mm-hmm. which is, who cares? Yeah. Save the country. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, one of the things that, uh, that Joe said to me, and it made me laugh, it's like, he says, you know something? People just can't figure out Mike. He's like the... You're like almost a Looney Tune character where everyone's like, don't go in there, Mike. Don't open that box, Mike. Don't open it. There's a bomb in there. And it opens up and it pulls up. But it's like you 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 went, you are like, you know, you got like Teflon Don with Donald Trump. But you're right. like Looney Tune tough. Yeah. Right. If that makes sense. Right. And that resilience. Right. And, and I and I, I when I look at Well, I did go inside of a claw machine. Well, yeah, <laughs> so when you go on Jimmy Kimmel, yeah, and you go on all these other shows where normally they would just that would be the end of it. Yeah, and they, told, and they told me no go on. Everybody yeah. told me no. Yeah, come. but but it's like they're baffled because whatever their designs, whatever their traps are, mm-hmm. it's like you kind of walk out. the The explosion's done. Yeah. Dust off well, the rubble. That's, that's the God's protection, you know. That's I, amazing. I think 